Hi there, it's Jason Gorman from Codemanship, the second in our series called Beyond Test Driven Development in aid of Bletchley Park. So this second screencast is all about parameterized testing. And this is a very useful technique for achieving high test coverage without necessarily having to write lots more test code. When we're writing our unit tests, it's quite possible that we'll be introducing um, a lot of potentially introducing a lot of duplicate test code. And it's a good idea when you're doing test-driven development, for example, or any kind of developer testing, to refactor our test code to remove some of this duplication and make the test code easier to change. By refactoring duplicate code into uh, reusable methods, for example, in our tests, we create an opportunity to actually parameterize our tests. That is to create reusable parameterized test methods. So we've got a couple of test methods here that test um, bank transfers. And we could refactor out the duplicate code in those test methods to create a, ref a, a parameterized test bank transfer method that accepts um, test input values and expected output values for the test. And then we could just reuse um, this method. We can just call it for each new test case. So we could cover a lot more examples with um, very little new test code. That's the basic idea of a parameterized test. It's just a reusable parameterized test method that accepts test input values and expected output values. There are some variations on this theme. A tabular test, for example, uses arrays or tables to store test input values and expected output values. Um, and then we can just loop through that table uh, and run a test for each row in the table. Uh, an incremental tabular test um, is a tabular test where we may be feeding some of the output values from one test into the next test. Uh, a loop-driven test is one where we actually generate input values and calculate expected output values as we loop through um, in some kind of way, using a for loop or a while loop, for example. Um, one of the dangers of a, a loop-driven test is that um, we can end up, because we're calculating the expected values, we can end up writing the same code that we're actually testing to do the calculation for the tests. Um, now, this is bad for two reasons. One, because it's duplicate code, which is very often not a good thing. But uh, also, it's bad because if you're using the same algorithm to test that algorithm, then are you really testing it? Um, if, if the algorithm is wrong, then you're going to end up potentially with tests that pass um, for code that's actually giving the wrong answers. So to avoid that, what I sometimes try to do if I do use a loop-driven test, which is, is rare, but it does happen, um, is I will write um, a different algorithm. I'll use a different algorithm to do the calculation in the tests. So then we're not, we're not just comparing like with like. We're actually taking a different implementation, a different way of ex calculating the expected outcomes um, such that we are, at the very least, not just uh, we, we haven't got the blind leading the blind. Uh, one of the dangers with tabular tests, on the other hand, is that um, when a, well, it's a danger with tabular tests and loop-driven tests, really, is that when one of the scenarios fails, because we're testing multiple scenarios in the same unit test, essentially, um, it can be difficult to see which of those scenarios fail. So you do have to be very careful to make sure that your tests fail in a meaningful way, um, and then it's obvious which of the scenarios actually caused the test to fail. So with that said, we're going to um, have a look at a little uh, theoretical example first. Uh, let's imagine we've got some uh, the unit test we saw earlier for the bank transfer, and we created that parameterized test. And now I've created a table. I've created a two-dimensional array to store test input values and output values. And then I just loop through that array um, and call our reusable parameterized test. A variation on that, um, we loop from uh, 0 to 999, and we calculate test input values, and we also calculate the expected outcomes. So that's an example of a loop-driven test there. So let's do a, a real example. Um, I'm going to be using the FizzBuzz uh, exercise. So I actually um, very quickly knocked up some tests for a, a FizzBuzz algorithm. If you're not familiar with this code cutter, um, we're going to generate a string of uh, numbers from 1 to 100 separated by commas. 
except that any numbers that are divisible by 3 we're going to replace with fizz and any numbers that are divisible by 5 we replace with buzz and if the number is divisible by 3 and 5 then we, do, we substitute fizz buzz. So that's the fizz buzz cata. I've already done the cata. I didn't do it test driven. I just wrote the code and then wrote a few unit tests. And what I'd like to do now is I'd like to get higher test assurance using parameterized tests. So the way to start this would be to first of all extract the test code into its own method. Let's call this test fizz buzz value at position so we'll tell it what position it is in the sequence is it the first one the second one etc and then we'll tell it what the fizz buzz value at that position should be we rerun the tests and then I want to parameterize this now so I'm going to add a parameter for the position in the fizz buzz sequence and I'm going to add a parameter for the expected fizz buzz value at that position so this is our test output Okay, so far so good. So we have this reusable test method here. I'm just going to move this out of the way of the public test methods, make it a little easier to see. Okay, and the first thing I can do is I can now reuse this test method here to remove this bit of duplicate code. So at position four, which is the fifth in the sequence because the sequence is zero based, um, because it um, should be buzz. So Let's uh, call our reusable test method and check that it is. So at position 4, the output should be buzz with a capital B. Okay, it's not keen on that because I haven't closed the uh, quotation marks there. And then we run our tests, and all is good. Now, I could write more test methods just calling this test visbuzz value at position um, parameterized test method. But what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to write, uh, write a tabular test here that will um, loop through a number of different examples in the same test. So let's um, test that um, a range of fizz those values should be correct. Bit of a cop out, but I don't want to write out the values individually. So let's create a table. Let's set up a table of input values. Um, these will be the positions. And let's just say, well, we haven't done the uh, first one, which is actually zero, I should say. And we didn't do the second one. We've done the third one, so that's two, um, and there's a gap there. We've done four, let's do five, six, and seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. I think we'll stop at 14 actually for now. So there's a range of values that we're going to um, run these tests against. And now what we need to do is we need to say what the expected outputs of those positions would be. So our, what would our um, fizz buzz values be? So I would say, oops, at zero, well, that's see, the FizzBuzz value of the number one. So that's just the string one. And at the next position, it's just two. We've already done the third one. So at position three there, we're expecting it to be four. At position four we've already done so five well five would um, be um, for the number six which is also divisible by three so we would expect that to be fizz again what about 
the 1 at 6. So that's the number 7, which is not divisible by 3 or 5. 8 is the next one. Again, another fizz here. And then the next one after that, because it's 10, should be divisible by 5. So that should be buzz. And then 11. And then it should be fizz, because 12 is divisible by 3. And 13. 14. And now 15 is divisible, divisible by 3 and by 5. So that one there should be fizz buzz. So it does get a little confusing. I must apologize because I'm using a zero based array, but the actual sequence starts at one. So uh, please, uh, please try and bear with me. What we're going to do now is we're going to loop through one of our arrays, probably positions. Um, let's just do that. It doesn't really matter because they should be the same length. Uh, and then we're going to call our reusable test method, our parameterized test, for that position. So positions i and fizzbuzz values i. And that will run those tests um, for every um, row in that uh, in that table there. So let's just run those. It's all looking okay, I think. Fingers crossed. Bang! Right, we've got a failing test. Expected fizz buzz, but was buzz fizz. Okay, that's interesting. Um, so it just so happens that we've only got one fizz buzz in our um, expected output values there. But that could be a little confusing if we had more than one of those. So we probably need to do something about the failure message. Um, I can't remember whether you do them before or after, but um, scenario, and then we'll say, actually, no, let's just say position, and then the position. And that should give us some clue as to what we were what we were actually doing when the test failed. So let's run the test again. So there you go. Um, no, I've got that the wrong way around there. I do apologise. I haven't I haven't written a test failure message in a while in JUnit. Um, generally, don't need them. Um, so no excuse though. I think the failure message actually comes first. And then the expected value. Let's try it now. <laughs> okay. Position 14. Expected fizz buzz, but was buzz fizz. So there's a little bit of a clue there as to which actual test failed. Okay, so there you go. There's a tabular test for the fizz buzz example. Uh, I hope that's given you some idea of what can be done with parameterized tests, as well as some of the dangers of using them. Um, and I hope you get some value out of them. The next screencast, the third in the series, will be on Design by Contract.